Hello everyone and welcome to the Luxembourg challenge. So this is something that I've been working on for a long time now and for the past month I roped in some other YouTubers and streamers into trying this as well. Of course they experienced great pain at my causation. <laughs> so now I'm hoping that all of you can experience that pain as well. So yeah this is your formal invitation to participate in the pain that is Luxembourg and specifically democratic Luxembourg. So the the idea behind this was to play Luxembourg and to stay democratic the entire game, never to change your ideology so you can't get that sweet, sweet 500 manpower weekly from communism, and you can't switch to fascism and attack anyone early on. So with those restraints, this is a very difficult challenge. The idea behind this is to not only form the Benelux, but to also form the EU with Luxembourg. Obviously a huge, huge challenge. You need to take the Benelux region, you need to take France, you need Germany, and you need Italy and all the states, including Zara. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big project, especially when you start out with roughly 8,000 manpower on limited conscription. Obviously, once Germany attacks you, you can ramp it up, but even just the surviving, the initial surviving against Germany is incredibly difficult. And in classic Hatless Spider fashion, I do have a couple new exploits to show you guys. One of them I just discovered yesterday, and it's rather insane. Like, I'm talking nearly unlimited manpower, and also nearly unlimited factories. So, yeah. Fasten your seatbelts this one will be fun. I don't think I want to go over the rules here, but I will have those in the description or maybe even a dedicated file. And also I'm not going to go over every single little tiny detail of how to defend. I do have that in a nice text file and every single step is listed if you want to read through that and you want to do this challenge on your own. I highly encourage you to read that. I will also be releasing the videos that I released to the other YouTubers and streamers that did want to try this out. So you can see those ways to hold as Democratic Luxembourg as well if you want a fully detailed video on how to do it. However, I will say the strategy is a bit different now, but you can at least use that as a baseline on how to do it. But I guess I could briefly go over some of the major rules. The biggest is no cheating, basically. <laughs> you gotta be on Iron Man mode, you need to be on regular difficulty or greater, and you can't switch ideologies as Democratic Luxembourg. Of course, no using the console, stuff like that, developer tools, whatever. Yeah, basically, I just want to keep this fun, you know, if you're cheating, it really reduces the fun. So yeah, we'll keep it honest and let's uh, enjoy this. I think if we can see who can get the EU the fastest time, I think that's what I want to make the challenge. So obviously making the EU, like I said, is incredibly difficult, but I'm going to show you guys some new exploits to figure that out and make it much, much faster, even faster than we previously thought possible. I know Pigeon and Creamy Lou have both been trying this a decent amount of times and Pigeon got very close to forming the EU around like, I think 1950 or so and same with Creamy Lou. So I think with these new exploits, it might be sub 45, 46, something like that. It might actually be possible. So let's get going here. Iron Man on. All right, there we are. So right off the bat, we're just gonna do production and we're gonna do electronic engineering. Like I said, I'm not gonna show you a ton more of this because it's kind of boring, <laughs> to be honest, but I will have that text file of everything that can be done, or maybe I'll put that in the description as well for this video. But I'll show you the big things, like uh, definitely my template later. You will need two of those templates. Obviously, it's gonna be tank templates because holding with only 8,000 manpower, you gotta limit the amount of manpower that you are using, as well as you need them not to pierce your, your uh, division. So we do start with two of infrastructure. That way we can bypass both infrastructure efforts. It's 140 days bypass. We'll also be researching truck so that we can bypass motorization effort. All right, so we have made it to war with, well, I guess we're not at war with Germany just yet. They are attacking Poland and of course then the allies as well. Uh, so let's show you my tank design here. This is going to be a medium howitzer, light fix superstructure, two heavy machine guns, and two extra ammunition storages. And then of course we change this from the medium tank to the medium artillery. And we give it three levels of armor as well. And we're looking at pretty decent soft attack, good armor, and maybe not other great stats. The defense is pretty decent as well. And that does help us significantly. Still pretty good reliability as well. Of course the speed's not great, but we will be defending for quite a while anyway. So that doesn't matter too much and the production cost is really where it's at here So just below 9.5. It's pretty darn good and especially considering the amount of IC that we have to throw around <laughs> 
uh, we gotta be fairly conservative with that. Now we did launch a coup. Well, we didn't actually launch the coup, but we are orchestrating a coup. We just started preparing that. We don't actually have enough guns. I produced about 6,500 guns of extra over what was needed for our two divisions as well. And to supplement the rest of this amount of guns, we're actually, once we can enter the war, we're going to train just a ton of these, like as many of those as we can to increase the deficit of guns that we have. We're gonna then request from a whole bunch of people. We're probably going to improve relations with some people as well, like Ireland, Portugal, Greece, Turkey, Sweden. Those are all really good ones to do. It just depends on how the guns can get to us and if they can. Uh, so <laughs> that is an issue. Of course, France will get attacked and destroyed fairly quickly. But typically, as long as you guarantee Belgium, you'll be able to get at least one shipment. In this case, I actually wasn't able to guarantee Belgium, but I, I was still able to guarantee Denmark. So I did do that. Hopefully they'll attack Denmark fairly quickly. If not them, they are just fine on us personally. So we have 170 days for that, but I think we're probably going to be entering the war before that 170 days is up. So we'll see. But let's go ahead and show you my tank division as well. So it's this armored division right here. I did just edit it, the basic armored division that it gives you. So we're looking at five of these SP artilleries and pretty decent uh, defense from all of those. We're at 137.2 total, but the soft attack is really where it's at. We get 256.8. Now you're probably going to look at this and say that HP and organization is absolutely horrendous, and uh, you're correct. Well, <laughs> the thing is, they're not going to be able to pierce us, and that's going to reduce the amount of damage that we take. And on top of that, we have this engineer company as well, so we do get some entrenchment. We're going to be looking at like 60% entrenchment with the doctrines that we're doing. So we will be going down this tree somewhat, and uh, we'll also get on top of all of that static warfare let's go ahead and just take that right now and we can take this one at least as well okay both of those nice if we can get this one as well hopefully we can that will add another five percent soft attack to our defense as well uh, like i said i want to get these entrenching soon probably once war warsaw falls is when i will stop that so also i did use spies to reduce the amount of fascism support that hungary has so we reduce them to about 38 percent and then I think it was about maybe 38.25 or something like that. But regardless, they have not been able to bridge the gap there. They haven't been able to pull the fascism support back up in order to take this focus here. Yeah, yeah, it's this one. Renounce the Treaty of Trianon. So if they're able to take this, they will end up becoming fascist and then you can't get them into a faction later. So that was my idea. I wanted to actually get them into a faction with us later on and then we can pull some manpower from them. So it's pretty useful for sure, especially since we don't need to do the coup in the British Raj until a bit later. As you can see here, we've increased the democratic support significantly. We're at 29% now and that will keep rising for a while. Like I said, we don't have to do the coup just yet. It will be very strong. Well, once that, that's part of the infinite manpower <laughs> so that's part of the exploit i'll be showing you guys and it is amazing and there goes warsaw so we're gonna go ahead and stop training our troops now it would be nice to get to the next level of uh veterancy but it's really just not gonna happen so i'm not gonna worry about it um, so now we're also going to start improving relations with some people. So I think we'll do Sweden, we'll do Ireland, Portugal, Greece, Turkey, and then we're going to do some South American nations. So we'll do Brazil and Argentina, and let's do Chile. And I guess that's good enough. Yeah, I think that's good enough for now. That's already a significant amount of people, and we'll get quite a lot of goods. Let's see. Okay, Spain actually went fascist this game. Interesting. Okay, that doesn't matter. It is nice if they are not aligned, honestly, because we can actually faction them later, but either way it works. Oh, and we do, of course, need to get our field marshal set as well. So I did use the uh, theater training to get a lot of nice generals, and you can see we had really nice luck here. Pretty good stats overall. This guy has extra stats because he is a harsh leader as well. Let's actually make him our main regular general, and let's promote this here, Guillaume. All right, so we'll promote him and we're going to give him the defensive doctrine and this will boost our max entrenchment even further so let's see what we're at now so the max is going to be 61 percent which is very nice netherlands is going down fast of course they always do and belgium will be next uh like i said i had to guarantee denmark this game that is a hyper rarity like it was just like a world tension issue i couldn't actually guarantee belgium at the time that i was supposed to be able to it is what it is we'll have to just play around with this i'm gonna go ahead and stop all those improved relations now it looks like it's all high enough we don't want to waste pp 
Okay, and there's the Denmark attack. So it was a bit late. We need to get into the fray, and so let's go. We do need to increase our deficit here, like I was saying before. I guess it doesn't matter. That, that'll be good enough. Yeah, 12.6. So we're going to request first from Belgium. There's a lot of people that you can get stuff for free from. We did improve relations with Ireland. They were not one of the freebies. But typically you'll see, as other freebies, Norway, Denmark, Finland, all of the Baltics, Soviets, Kingdom of Romania, Yugoslavia, and Bulgaria. So another thing we need to do while we're at it, we need to increase to extensive conscription and we're going to do total mobilization and then women in the workforce as well. So that way we can keep increasing our manpower and we can have the full amount of civilian factories available to us. All right, we just did all the requesting. Another thing I forgot to do and we this is also very important. You want to do the why we fight focus right now. You don't want to wait on that. You want to be able to create factions as soon as possible. Now we see if we just get mega stomped here. And also, we're going to have to see if uh, the shipments will actually arrive before France falls. Probably not. Oh, good amount from the Soviets there. And you can see I was requesting convoys as well. That's also very important since we will need convoys as a landlocked nation. A good amount of goods from all over the world here. And we are getting attacked for right away. Uh, one thing you can do with these attacks to make them stop even faster because the idea behind this is we deorg them as fast as possible so like you can see that unit is already almost fully deorged but to deorg them even faster we pop this force attack and now we're going to be doing even more damage we have another 20 percent attack now and yeah look at that they just they just stop instantly they're just getting wiped all right, so we are going to get the allies inviting us to the faction, but we're going to decline that. If we didn't join the allies, we could not take the Benelux, and we also couldn't take the EU since we wouldn't be able to take France and Italy. So this is a very important step. We do not want to join the allies, and we're going to be making our own faction that is far superior, obviously. All right, and this is also an important step. You don't want to forget to cancel these units because otherwise your units are not going to reinforce at all. Any extra manpower that you get will go to those units first rather than your units actually in the field. There goes Belgium, and so far they're not attacking us anymore, so they're already looking scared of us. And I like to see this, the French are actually holding a little bit here. So maybe, uh, look at all this bottleneck of troops, like they're having to go around us. So I think that maybe does slow them down a little bit, probably not enough. <laughs> We are going to need this tech as well. This unlocks the improved medium howitzer so we can get a slightly better cannon on our tanks. Well, hey, look at that. We just got a huge shipment. It looks like only like a, a portion of each shipment came through though. So, I mean, I assume that's because we didn't have the convoys available. So we just got the convoys and I guess they came with some guns preloaded in them. <laughs> Uh, let's see how much damage we took in that initial assault. 331, I'm happy with that. That is not bad at all. They will be attacking us soon, especially after France falls, but yeah, really not too shabby at all. And there goes France. All right, so you're going to see what happens here now. Oh, we actually got a Belgian unit here in Metz. That's funny. This is not typical. Normally, they would be attacking us fairly soon, but in this case, since there was a Belgian unit in Metz, it will take them a while to dislodge that unit. It will get killed eventually because they will be attacking, but as you can see, they do these goofy staggered attacks and they do like next to no damage i actually had a strategy before where i actively placed a unit there just to force them to do that staggered attack now i think it's actually better just to keep the two units up here because you can build a lot of experience just just from their, them attacking you and and then of course you inflict a lot of damage as well which is always nice especially for war score purposes all right so we do need a lot of these oil processing and fuel refining techs so i'm going to start doing those now we're getting some more synthetic refineries. We can also do the industrial land appropriation once we get close to building the second synthetic factory. And that will allow us to build a third one in here. So uh, you can put three in every single province. So we'll max out Luxembourg with three synthetic refineries. All right, so first thing we're gonna do once we get the why we fight is we're gonna actually justify on, well, actually, you know what? We should have been doing that already. Let's do it right now. We're gonna justify against Japan. So East Bay, that's perfectly fine. It'll take 25 days. Yeah, I should have actually done that once we hit 100% world tension, but it should be okay. So we're going to improve relations with Hungary because they're the first ones we're going to try to, well, we're going to attempt to get into a faction with us. We can go ahead and recruit another unit. So we're going to recruit another armored division and we're going to place it here in Luxembourg once it's ready. We can go ahead and get the Grand Assault Doctrine as well. So we finish out most of our tree at this point. Um, 
There's not too much else we're going to need. I guess after this one finishes, we will want to have this equipment effort too. So yeah, I should have actually justified on Japan a little bit earlier because then we could actually create a faction with Hungary right now. We just don't have enough of that modifier feeling threatened by Luxembourg yet, which is kind of hilarious that people are feeling threatened by us at this point, and I love it. Okay, first justification of Japan is done, and I guess what we're going to do again. Another justification. So on Dalian this time, that works just fine. There we are. Perfect. Create a faction. Your faction name here. And the dawn of your faction name here. We're going to hit call to arms. Oh yeah. Alright, so there's not many Germans here at the moment. And Romania is not in the faction yet. It might take a little bit, but that's totally fine. The Germans will arrive and they will curb stomp Hungary very hard. Alright, our second justification is now done. But we're not going to do anything with that. I'm guessing, okay, we're going to have to reduce the stability of India, and that is going to be very important. So we're going to do propaganda over here, and I guess uh, we'll, we'll keep boosting their democracy as well, because that does hurt their stability too. And Hungary is falling, although it's kind of taking a while. I'm going to request some expeditionaries from Hungary. We can get four of them. Germany, please push. <laughs> Even with all those four off the line, they're still not wanting to push. Germany, scumbag Germany. It appears that maybe this worked. They have a bunch more troops down here now. So just force attacking and wasting the Hungarian equipment. There we go. Okay, that's what we wanted to see right there. You know what? We don't need to kick them. It's not allowed for governments in exile. But what is allowed is if you only have exiles in your faction. Even though we shouldn't be able to dismantle the faction with other faction members, it's still an option. All right, let's wait one day. We get these speeches and exile uh, public recognition of the Hungarian exile government. And now we can do dismantle the faction. And now we get an extra factory from them. And Hungary joins the allies. But even though it says that, we're still getting exiled veteran manpower daily of nine. And that's with only 16 legitimacy. So as we boost it with these parliamentary speeches, we'll be getting more. And even though they're in the allies, we're still the ones benefiting from it. So we get the extra factories from them and we get the, we get the manpower as well. So this is kind of like a glitch that I found and it is fantastic. So we're just going to keep going in the Balkans. They're going to take Yugoslavia now because Yugoslavia is feeling threatened by us of plus 94 <laughs> so we can do this again we will create the faction and actually let's improve relations too because that does seem to help with calling them into the war and getting them to actually go to war faster so we'll do that and we are going to get ourselves another exile government this way all right your faction name here once again call to arms let's see if it'll work no it is if you improve their opinion of you like right now you see plus 20 modifier on that so if we continue to improve relations with them that should go up and then they should accept but again we're just going to call them in in this particular battle let's see if they'll do it mm, maybe improving relations doesn't actually do anything in that oh finland okay and yugoslavia got called in nice okay sweet so now you can see they're getting hit in a lot of places very, very quickly. So the next victim, I mean uh, ally, will be Bulgaria. All right, and we got our first exiled division from the Kingdom of Hungary. Okay, so one interesting thing about this is on June 1st, 1940, the Germans will always hardcore start attacking Metz. So this is going to fall very, very quickly now, and then we'll be totally surrounded. So right now I'm just going to dump this out so that when they do start attacking us, we will be good here. There it goes. All right, Metz has fallen. So now we are just a total island in a sea of Axis. Yugoslavia is down. Beautiful. All right, so once again, we'll wait like a day. There we go. Yugoslavian parliamentary speech, that's one we're going to do. This one isn't an option, so we might as well not even click it, but it doesn't really matter. Request control of U Yugoslavian Navy. We're going to do that as well. Oh, and they gave it up. So, yoink, we now have a fleet. I think I'd rather have this. There you go, we got 6.82k manpower now. So, 
we are effectively we just deleted a fleet down in the sea and somehow all the sailors made it up here to Luxembourg so don't ask me how I guess what they did they came into Vichy they walked up through into Switzerland got on some boats here at Basel and rode the boat all the way up into Luxembourg. And somehow they did it near instantaneously too, so the efficiency of those guys is just amazing. Oh, oh, Yugoslavia joined the Allies, but, hmm, did they really? Because we're getting 23 manpower daily from them. So I don't know about that. All right, so currently Bulgaria does not want to faction with us. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna improve relations and we're going to do another justification on Japan. So 25 days, that'll do the trick. The dawn of your faction name here. Oh, they were so close to joining the, tri the Tripartite Act as well. I assume that will cancel. Yeah, because now they're in a faction. Ooh, just in time. We just yoinked them right from Germany. So we're going to hit call to arms. And they join instantly. So they're going to have to get some troops down here because Bulgaria is going to start pushing out. All right, good. Romania is joining against Bulgaria. And in Luxembourg itself so far, let's see, we've lost only 339. Well, once again, we're gonna do the trick to take some of their divisions away from the front and make sure that they can't defend themselves properly, so. Hey, we got another exile. And this one's from Yugoslavia, so nice. We do want to make sure we keep hitting these parliamentary speeches whenever we can. Yeah, we'll keep getting that manpower running into Luxembourg. All right, so next up is going to be Greece. There we go, Bulgaria's gone. All right, so once again, they don't have any fleet or anything, so we'll just do the parliamentary speech and dismantle the faction. All right, so one more justification, let's get it. And then Greece should be allowing this soon, especially since we're improving the relations with them on top of that. There we go, create the faction with Greece. Let's do it. All right, once again, the dawn of your faction name here for what, the fourth time now? One, two, three, four, yeah, four, four, four times the charm. All right, so again, if we want to, we can pull some of their troops from the front, but actually we don't want them to capitulate in this case. We're using them as a, conduit to be able to declare war on the allies so basically when we are able to kick them from our faction as long as they are at war with the axis which we are calling them to arms with that right now then when we kick them they'll actually join the allies but the problem is if you only call them to a defensive war they will have created no world tension so you can't justify on them so that's where i came up with this justification on the japanese if we declare war on them in an aggressive war it, where we are the aggressors and that also then makes Greece an aggressor and so they've created some world tension we can then kick them from the faction they'll join the allies they are still considered an aggressor and we can then justify on them and then they once we declare war on them they'll bring in the rest of the allies we can go to war with the entire allied faction so what that does for us after that is we can then do a coup in the British Raj and we have a mutual war with them so we can actually create a faction and India is not going to have this agrarian society debuff so they are insane for manpower like they will get us a like I think at max it's either like 1500 or 1700 daily so you're talking about like you know communist Luxembourg where you can get 500 manpower weekly no 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 we're going with Indian who that will produce us 1700 manpower daily not weekly so yeah this is the infinite manpower exploit essentially for minor nations well i mean I, you could really do this with a lot of different nations and even, even democratic it still works because of this trick that i found with bringing in a non-aligned nation that you can then justify on that will join the allies so yes this is the trick i hope you guys have stayed for this moment because this will be historic greece is holding out pretty well i'm not gonna but since we actually want them to help, I could actually take some of their units just to make sure they defend some good spots to defend. All right, so we're just going to do a fallback line. Uh, let's do it right here. That's a really nice defensible spot. All right, so we're into October now. We only need to survive until October 27th, so 125 days for the justification on them. And our coup takes 180 days when we commence it. So we're good to go now. Let's go ahead and do it because this is 180 days. We have about 23 days on this and then 125 days for the justification. So we'll be able to declare war before that happens. So we do need to declare war on Japan. That is very important. Glad I just noticed that. All right, let's check casualties. 197K to 451 on our part. Not bad at all. All right, and we are very close to being a little kick Greece here. So we need October 27th and then we can 
and kick them from the faction. And before we do that as well, we do want to accept this right here where they want to join against Japan. We're going to accept that. That means Greece has now created some world tension. Very important you don't forget that step as well. All right, it's past October 27th. Kick from the faction and there we go. Kingdom of Greece has joined the allies. Look at that. Justify war goal. Hmm. All right, so we want to be specific here. We do want to choose Crete. Crete is the least likely to actually get taken in this 125 days. All right, there's our justification for Crete. So we will go ahead and declare war on the allies right now while we have that available. Available, <laughs> if I can talk. All right, they're currently calling everyone to war with us, but it's fine. We're landlocked inside of the Axis and 20 days on this left. One day, finished. All right, that's kind of a smaller India than I usually see, which is weird. There's an issue. Can't create the faction, uh, but we can fix that. Just wait, improve relations. Oh, Indian opinion of, yeah, okay. I definitely would advise keeping the world tension down. Yes, there it is. Create the faction. So they held off on joining any factions, so that was good. And your faction name here for the fifth time now. Call to arms. I guess I don't think that matters, does it? All right, so now we just have to wait until India caps, which shouldn't take too long because the entire allies are at war with them. Um, there, there is something that can happen there where the, if they attack, it's it's a problem. Move into Saarbrücken, and we will be set. Uh, Saarbrücken has a really good amount of steel as well, and typically they'll have some synthetic factories in there too. So I always like to change the default law to local autonomy because it's amazing. And we're going to do a division designer. We're going to create a singular cavalry that we can use that as our garrison template. Okay, so they had one synthetic refinery in there. Let's build a couple more and then let's improve the infrastructure. And we're going to build forts. Looking like a pretty solid defense here. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke too soon. They weren't very well entrenched. So let's move an infantry over there. India, why, why are they just holding out? I don't want them to. And we got the, uh, as as we discussed in my Discord, this is Gandhi from Wish as our leader. Gandhi from Wish.com. So we do want to continue using our exile manpower. I guess we could maybe do another Hungarian tank. As soon we'll have the Indian manpower and then we won't have to worry about anything. We'll just have all the manpower in the world. Oh, and there we have it. We have the Indian nation as a government in exile now. So we're going to do parliamentary speeches and all that good stuff. Ooh, they annexed Ishi. That's unusual. I don't usually see that. So yeah, as the legitimacy goes up, continue doing those speeches and everything, you're going to quickly get enough manpower to, to then pump out some more units. And that's the beauty of this strategy. All right, so we're at 1.9k casualties and Germany has 1.1 million from us now. And as you can see, it really encourages them to attack once you take Saarbrücken. <laughs> they go a little bit nuts after, after you do that. So as you can see, the amount of units we can quickly get out into the field is kind of insane, especially when you're considering that we are at Luxembourg. <laughs> yeah, even with 36 legitimacy, we're already getting 376 a day. All right, so I'm gonna show how to take Mets now. Uh, so let's dump all these units out. It can possibly be dumped out. We'll get some more troops over here that then we can play around with. And let's use our tanks, all the tanks here, all the tanks there, and Let's grab some veteran units as well. And there we go. And we're going to do siege artillery here. So there we go. We get the green bubble. And that should do enough damage. There, there are the massive forts there in the Maginot, but the siege artillery does do damage to the forts as well. There we go. And we can completely abandon that province because we only need Mets. And now we have control of Alsace-Lorraine. We need to make sure all of our bases are covered. So you got that, that Indian manpower at your back now, as well as a good amount of factories. And yeah, you can just push out from here. Got 27,000 and a 477 daily. It's nuts. All right, guys. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Leave a like. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't yet. And especially if you want to see more insane exploits like this. I do come up with these from time to time. And yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.